I could be wrong about the frigate bird being a lek. I'm pretty sure it is actually a lek, but apparently there's a lot of varying definitions on leks and what exactly is involved in a lek. But they're trying to they're they're spaced out. They're trying to attract females. Pretty sure that is a lek. But sometimes it could be: does it involve a nest? Does it not involve a nest? Does the frigate bird stay around? There's so many different questions that go into this, which is why we're talking about this and trying to get some little details ironed out. So we mentioned earlier that one of the, uh, the problems with female strategies is that it could lead to runaway selection. And what do we mean by that? So basically when females select males for a certain trait, that trait in the males provides a positive feedback loop. Because one, the females prefer that trait. So they're going to pick males that have that trait. And because males that have that trait do better, that trait is going to get larger in the environment. And it's just gonna keep propagating until something has to give. There either has to be a compromise or another situation we'll talk about quickly. So let's use the peacock as an example of this. So the peacock, there's probably several things that go on in the characteristics of the peacock. It may be the number of eyes that are in the peacock feathers. It may be the size of the peacock feathers. It could, or the tail. It could be the, the way the UV light shines off of the feathers and maybe we as humans can't see it, but the peahens can. I'm not sure. There, there's, there's, there could be something else entirely. It could be the number of um, the central stalks of the feathers or something. Who, who knows? But there, this is what the female looks at and help and partially uses to decide if she wants to use mate with that peacock or not. Is by the feathers. So, so let's just let's just use size of feather, um, feather tail for lack of a better term. So females historically would mate with the bigger tail. And what would happen is their offspring would then have probably larger tails. The ones with the larger tails would then mate, and you would see the tails get larger and larger and larger and larger. Now, this is a problem for a male. It advertises for females, but it also advertises him to predators. It has a lot to, you know, it's a, it's a cost to this, which again goes into the handicap principle we'll talk about later. So eventually there has to be some sort of compromise. The, the tail feathers just, at some point get too big to be properly used, something has to change in this as well. The Irish elk is, is now extinct, and it is believed that part of the reason it is extinct is because of runaway selection. If you look at the antlers of an Irish elk, they are huge, they are humongous. And the thought goes like this, females prefer larger antlers, probably indicates better dominance you know the male is going to be able to fight other males the male is going to be able to protect the females better you know protection all that stuff eventually you get to a point where these antlers are just too costly to maintain who knows how many of these poor irish elk probably had broken necks from carrying around those heavy heavy antlers there, there's no telling, no telling. But we see this, it, it, there's a point where these antlers just are no longer efficient for the mating cost that we see here. Okay. Now, females usually choose in males because typically females are the choosier sex. They're the higher investment sex of the two. But males do get some choice in the females that they mate with as well for varying reasons. So, Remember, the basic strategy for males is this. They want to mate with as many females as possible because that increases your offspring. You want to provide information to the female about your quality so that the female will choose you and allow you to mate. And if you have to invest or protect a group of females, it could reduce your opportunities for mating, but guaranteed matings are matings, and that's you know, ultimately what we're all about. Males tend to be more choosy if the courtship is risky for the male. If it put, they have to put more energy into the courtship, they have to build bowers, they have to do things like that, or they are monogamous. If you are monogamous, you're choosing one mate and that's gonna be it. Even if it's for a season, that's gonna be your one mate. You're probably going to be more choosy at this point because you're giving up your opportunities to mate just like she is, okay? This is a male topi, um, kind of antelope type creature. And he has a lek, and he mates with more females per capita than new males that are forced to peripheral sites. So males, so they have a lek system where they set up 
you know, various areas for mating and attracting females. And if you are in the center of the lek, on average, you're going to copulate about 1.775 times. Whereas if you're on the outside edges of the lek, then you only get like a 0.5 um, females per, um, per male. So your chances of mating go down a lot if you are on the outside edges of these leks. And so apparently location within the lek is much higher. Again, I would imagine there's probably some ancillary things that go into this. Probably the males fight for the center leks because they know they're going to have more success there. It's like how houses in the city are more expensive than houses in the country because you have access to more resources, things like that. That probably is not a bad analogy for this. But without knowing more about it, I can't really get into that. So ultimately, males and females have to compete with one another. They have to compete within their sex. They have to compete for, re um, for copulation and things like that. A lot of this relates back to environmental conditions and the resources that are available, how the females group together, how mobile there are. Your social systems go back into this. And so ultimately, this gives your species their typical mating system. And again, as we get into the mating systems, which is the section of the next subject of the next section, we're not there yet. But when we get there, understand these are guidelines. These are not hard and fast rules. And for some species, this can change up as well. But we're going to stop right here with this because I'm fixing to get into handicap sex principle. We're not done with this section just yet. Just done with this line of thought for the moment.